Good afternoon, Nigerians, and you're very much welcome to another wonderful episode of Editor's Forum on Galaxy Television, where we bring you issues on the front burner during the week and have um, journalists and professionals in the journalism field talk about it, analyze, dissect, and give um, solution driven um, um, discussions. Have to so driven discussion because as I always say, a lot and a lot and a lot has been happening, is happening, and will keep happening week in, week out. There are a lot of reactions already, and so we, we, don't, we don't need to keep giving reactions. So we have to dissect the topics, look at it end to toe, analyze them, and give solutions that will help to move our nation forward as a whole and uh, definitely to do that I have some wonderful guests with me in the studio today but before I introduce them I am Lion Sugar for Lauren Shaw and I welcome you once again now I will be running you through a few things that happened during the week as I always do so that we can have a few of okay what the week was about and just one two three um, topics that we give quick reactions to before we go into the main topics of the week. All right, on Monday, the Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice, Prince Latif Agbeli, challenged the National Judicial Council to expedite action on the process of appointing more justices to fill the vacancies on the bench of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. The Supreme Court presently has only 10 justices, as against uh, the full complement of the Constitution of 21 justices and that this was as um the agf the njc at large swore in 57 new sands in nigeria and still on monday we saw the minister of aviation and aerospace development mr festus kiamo someone heads of aviation regulatory agencies for a very important meeting why this is due to the recent lagos abuja flight diverting people to Asaba. I mean, going from Lagos to Abuja and then you find yourself in Asaba. Delta State's capital was said to be due to weather um, conditions. So the minister summoned a meeting to address that and going forward, what to do. And he said sanctions will be made when necessary and you know, the, to, um, recommendations to forestall a recurrence in the future and on Tuesday a day that Nigeria you know was buzzing was bobbing why what happened our president Bola Ahmed Tinubu he informed the Senate of his intention to you know present the 2024 appropriation bill to the joint um, house to the joint assembly both the lower and the upper chamber and also on Tuesday Something very wonderful happened. Although, yes, this happens in the, in the Senate, you know, they put things to voice vote and they say, yay, nay. But uh, on, on Tuesday, majority of us that, you know, that, that saw that video, that watched the plenary of the Nigerian Senate, were shocked because we had a lot of nay and then the nay having vote. That is one of the topics we'll be looking at today. So definitely I would give you that full gist and finally on wednesday that's what i'll be um, stopping we saw the president present the 2024 appropriation bill to the joint national assembly that is the senate and the house of reps a budget of 27.50 trillion naira to run you know 2024 and yeah that has generated a lot a lot a lot a lot of reactions but definitely that is the big story for the week and we will be looking at that as our also our second topic of the day okay um let's do this let's go on a short break when we return i will be introducing my guests to you and then we'll dive into the conversation to stay with us all right you're welcome back to still editors forum on galaxy television uh, you can see I am definitely laughing because watching that uh, report over and over, you know, bring, makes me to laugh. But I, I don't know if this is my position alone, if my guest in the studio will be sharing the same position with me. So join me to welcome Mr. Tony Nwaje. He's a public affairs analyst and the CEO, Back to Back Communications Group, 
and the publisher, the recorder, and G. Thank you, so much, thank, you so thank, you so thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me. And of course, uh, one other guest will be joining us shortly. Um, I will introduce him as he comes in. So uh, I, I, I actually don't want us to go into this yet. Mm -hmm. I want us to quickly, you know, do a few of um, um, this Ondo crisis. Okay. And we also saw something related in Edo State. Mm -hmm. And now the Edo Deputy Governor is coming out to, you know, say he's vying mm -hmm. for governorship. Yeah, yeah. And then in Ondo State, the president is still, he intervened last week. What do you have to say to all of this governor deputy crisis? Um, I don't really, I think it's, it's time to stop all this uh, hula baloo, you know, the fight between governors and their deputies, you know, because it, it, it's not just starting with Undo or Edo mm -hmm. State, it has been a recurring decimal. Yes. From Bayelsa, I remember when uh, Alamo Shaya was governor of Bayelsa State, he had issues and, and then somebody wants to be the deputy governor was trying to, you know, then across the state. Governors, Ganduja is the only governor that I know that the, I mean, the, the governor, is governor left to contest and he won, you know, that's like one person. He's deputy. Yeah, that's one person, you know, the, uh, Ganduja was deputy. The rest, they fight them. I mean, and you see governors and trying to pick people who will not give them a fight during their tenure, they pick a 90 years old person, just I mean, for the rest, for, for the governors to start having respect for their deputies, I think we need to look into our constitution again to think about it. So at least the governors, the deputy governors can have some kind of energy, some kind of strength. You can't be a deputy governor, like um, a spare tire. The governor can make you redundant for the rest mm -hmm. of your four years. You and know, work with the minister. Yes, and, and then, then I don't, it doesn't make sense. So why can't we look at the situation, look at the possibility of thinking with the constitution and I allow the deputy governor to contest. Mm -hmm. And the primary is just like the governor. I know they will not allow it because you know it will be like you know equal powers. But that's the only process. That's the only way out of this. But but the mm -hmm. truth is talking about equal power. So when this governor leaves the seat, another person has to take over. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so yes. why why does it why what, what is the what what do you, you think know, that the, the issue, the issue, is, the issue is really the issue is personal. Could it be personal? Yeah, no, no, the issue is just for pure politics. Like you know in those states, for instance, they don't want any tower to you know you know once he has. That gov that has that power, it mean, uh, you know, election is coming, mm. which means he may vie for governorship, and the people supporting the governor may not like it because they have a candidate still waiting. You, you, you mm. understand the politics, so him being on that chair, you know, makes it possible for him and easy for him to be the next governor of the state when you know election approaches uh, during election and all that. So they will not allow him. So it's just political intrigues. How it not how it benefits the masses, the mm. people, it's just about themselves. If he's the, gov if he's the acting governor and he's, here, he, he's open to opportunities, you know, then this person will keep him to succeed the governor. We're not, you know, it's just pure politics and it cannot continue like that. But, but, but does that also suggest that uh, even political parties do not have the interest of the people? Because how do you put two people together on a ticket and then they don't even agree, much, yes. they don't like each other, they don't want to work together, and exactly. then there are issues. Exactly, exactly. Because, for example, you are the, you are the governor. They've elected you at the primary. Then the political party will not say, no, we will give you half the, they, they will now give you a deputy governor. If it's somebody you cannot work with, yeah, there'll be that friction. Mm. And once there's that friction, there's a problem. And then you have an amb overambitious deputy who sees you as, as a stumbling block, he wants to succeed you. In, in fact, he wants to even run again with you. Is, is there a problem no, there's succeeding? No problem. There's no, that's, that's why, because they cannot work together. But if you have picked somebody, they can work together. The guy is okay, no problem. After my four years or after my eight years, you run. But when you bring someone who, who is looking at you like it's only, you know, it's like a problem, he wants to take you out because you guys are not come. You are not in the first time. You are not even, you know, come. Com, com, um, you're not together. They did not bring you, he did not nominate you. The party mm -hmm. leaders nominated you. At times, the, the one the president is doing, and then he has to sign, I mean, an on, on, on dated resignation leave. I mean, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. That's the, for us to start having, or for the government to start having respect for the governor and for the deputy governor. 
something has to happen. We must look at those books again. We must look at our constitution again and try and see how we can give or confer some respect to the, you know, to the um, deputy governor's office so that whoever sits on that chair be accorded some respect, not at the whims and caprices of the governor. You know, it can, it, it can make things difficult for you. I think this so let the deputy governor start. Let the governor start picking who his deputy should be, not political mm. leaders in the states. Or, you know, at times of I, I, th I think this should also go to the national level. It's, it's, it, it comes across. Yeah, it comes across. So. It comes across. But at the national level, uh, at national level, at times it happens that way. That party leaders nominate your deputy, a vice president should be, you know, for you to work together. And that's why you see occasionally uh, the, the deputy governor is impeached. And you say, no, the governor's hand is on her, can the governor sit and watch his But would that not also be personal and um, selfish, being the, gov the, the person aspiring to be the governor, now being the one selecting who will work with him on that journey? Would yeah. that not the general? Yeah, that's why I said Because you know, like, your yeah. politics can. Yeah. It's you see that that way. No, no, you see that that way, or let's work with the constitution. So as they're picking the governor, they're picking the, it's doable. We make that constitution. We make the, we make the laws, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. Let the governor, let the deputy governor compete with the governor at the primary level where governors are picked. So these are the role of the deputy governor. This is the role. So there won't be any clash. So you do your own. I do my own. Not you dictating who work for me. Mm -hmm. And you can make you can you can you can you can make my office to jump down. Even and it, it it causes risks because at some point the governor deputy governor will react. Would it even be wonderful when we, if, if they say, okay, so during primaries, the person who won, who has the highest votes, goes in as the governor, and then maybe the person with the second highest vote goes in as deputy. Goes in as that deputy. would be a bad idea maybe either. That will yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea either, but they won't do it. Because like, I don't know why politicians are doing it. We, we, we should, we should yeah, do that. Things, that should, yeah, yeah. things yeah. that should be as simple as they will make it so difficult for us. It's simple. But I think they like the drama. And right? then linking that to so our uh, yay mm -hmm. and nay, the electoral <laughs> act amendment move. I think for your, all everyone in the office at, the, at on that day, when we when we heard the when we saw the video, when we listened, we were like, wait, the names have been scared. That that is that is not so mm -hmm. common. Although of course they you know they throw out some things, but that was so. so, so what, 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 what do you have to say? That I, was I, 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 I think the 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 person who presented that bill mm. didn't do his own work well. Mm. You know, yes, he didn't do his own work well, and that's I know the power of the the leader of the Senate or the leader of the House of Reps. Once that gavel is raised, he he listens to what's you know, mm. and I'm looking at that bill again. I think, for me, it's undemocratic. No, before you, you, sorry, before you go there, what do you mean he should have done his work? Uh, no, I mean, you must, like, must do the, you must gathering. do the politics here now. You don't okay. just drop a bill and you okay. expect people. When the hear, when you hear the support, mm -hmm. even everybody, you know, and when the Senate or the head of this um, legislature overrules, people can tell mm -hmm. that it's not being real. But you have to do your homework. You can have, well, what the Senate majority leader said, he didn't do. The, the bill was not even presented to senators for them to go through it ahead of the presentation. Mm -hmm. So I think there, there's a, a mistake from its part, you know. Okay, but so what I'm interested more is the so bill. Now, is look, looking at the bill, the, the bone of contention. Yes, yeah. I think it's undemocratic. It's undem because when you do that, when you, okay, I understand what he's trying to say, you know. Somebody dies, resign, like the governor of, uh, former governor of Plateau State that is now Minister of Labor. And some others like that, you know. Even the minister yeah, of the minister of uh, stay for labor, uh, and uh, stay for labor too, and Kiru and all that, you know. That want some of them have won the election, but they are ministers now. So there's vacancy mm -hmm. at their constituents. In a situation where the party now select at their wins and caprices who to sit on that chair, you deny the people you're supposed you you are supposed to represent the right to vote. So it's now at you know at the at, you know at the, at the it's now this it's now left for the party to do that job, which the people ordinary because you are representing us, mm -hmm. you are supposed to represent us. But now the party is deciding. What if the people feel that that guy will not, the person will not give them equitable representation at the legislature? But the party has over you know taken mm -hmm. that, which I think is undemocratic. It's, it's an undemocratic process. I don't I know it will save us cost. 
the cost of doing election, the, but I said it many times that this is not democracy we are practicing. We are practicing civil law. We only left military because the tenets of democracy are all missing in our sight. Yeah, in, the, in this same country, we vote before election, the results are there. Those are not an election. Then you say, I won the election. You didn't win election. You manipulated it. You rigged. Like well, the, well, going, going, to, going to the tribunal, going to appeal, no, 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 we, we still come back no, no, to the no, 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 we know, we still know. In Kogi, for instance, which has happened recently, elections were conducted, were meant, were meant to be conducted. That money, you know, was everywhere. It's not even rumored, it was clear. The pictures were there. Results were, even before getting to the polling unit, how? Have At some point, they, mm -hmm. I, I, and I correct in that um, uh, particular place was saying they will conduct a rerun election yeah, they, they, in some places, they, and then the next thing we hear they was don't, they don't, the they results don't. were announced. And this is not what it should be. This is not what it should be. When people elect their leaders, the person in question is accountable to them. Mm. You know, you know, is responsible for them. He knows they voted for me, and he's going to do everything possible to make them to make their life better. But when you know you manipulate the process the process, you you owe them anything, you owe them nothing. Just like this same bill. But now just, the, what what the senator put forward is that is why it is the party's logo that is usually on and the, the party nominates so nominates for election. For election. Not to you know just easy like I just nominate you know, like uh, just go Go and be the secretary. I mean, it does. How would you feel? And the people doesn't want you. People, you, all of them sitting down there represent a, represent constituencies, constituents in Nigeria. Mm. Now, maybe you're in Lagos, for instance, or you're in Abuja. You've never visited. Your, they don't even know you, but because you're closer to the to the party chairman, and he says you are the representative of your of your people. You are the senator or member representing your constituency. It doesn't all go well for our growth, our democratic, democratic process. Democracy is government of the people, you know? So it must be reflected in all we do. Okay, so for me, it's on democratic. People must have a say if you want to be, represent me as a people so that I can have access to you and ask you questions when things are not turning up. We must vote for you. That's democracy. I said we want dictatorship because for me, it sounds like dictatorship. We truly we save money. We save a lot. But the ones who you won't say it, you know what we're doing. No, has it impacted? So let's just go, let the people have a say, because when you do this, you're denying the people the right to vote and have a fair representation at the Senate or House of Reps. Even because they, to go through the State House of Assembly too, if they succeed at the Senate. Okay, so lo looking at, uh, yeah, it's not democratically okay, as you said, but looking at how they threw it out, would you would you ever think they they are just trying to you know the senators trying to to be on the safe side so th these things don't come back to them? Yeah, yeah, no, that that angle is there because all of them are there seated and they've I gone mean, through. If you see how they feel, you've gone through it. Then somebody will just come easy, you know, just walk into the senate, didn't go through a process. But you will die, you probably die, uh, if something happens. No, no, they will say no. Let that person go through that same process. Look, I watched one comedy, you know, and then, you know, they, they, these guys were playing the ball, and he threw, mistakenly dropped the ball inside the building. And inside that building, there was a, a, a soldier eating, and the ball, you know, scattered what he dropped on the table and, you know, destroyed everything. And so the first guy said, no, go get the ball. And he went in there, and he came out, he saw what, he saw a soldier, and he quickly went back. He withdrew and came back. And he said, so where is the ball? He said, no, no, there's no problem, you go. You know, so go through that. And the guy who on this, it was the third guy that was caught. So you go through that same thing. We went through. Mm. You don't get it easy. No, 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 no. Somebody dies. He, that person that died went through a process. So why would you not? I mean, I don't know where the bill came from. So if I'm one of the senators, I will, I will, I will shut it down straight. Because I, for me to sit down here, I'm even in court still. The tribunal is still deciding my case. And you're telling me that somebody is just walking here and sit on this chair without hassle. That going through electoral process now. He must be nominated, he must be voted, and he must win before he's sitting down here. Not just because the party likes me. And you leave, you leave this thing at the whims of the, you know, these people who decide, who can, can they turn decide who goes? You know, you can use that, you know, to, to punish your political, uh, wait, okay, you know, this guy wants to, oh, he's showing interest. 
during my election, he didn't show, he didn't donate, or he didn't do that. I like, oh, spoke against my aspiration. I'm not going to. And he has, you, you can see that he's, the, he's number one. Then you pick the other person. That's for me, it's dictatorship. Like the process. Are we practicing democracy or not? Yes, we are yes, practicing we democracy. Are. But when you do it that way, it's no longer democracy. It's now left for whoever is seated, seated there, the president, the governor, or the party chairman to say, you know, this is a person, it's like nominating for minister. You know, it's only a ministerial position you can just easily nominate. And because what if you sit at that Senate? We are practicing, we, we are we borrowing it from. And they're even better in the democratic process. You want to go relax? No, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. If I was asking, I would say, I would, I would Part of this it. loud yeah, name. <laughs>